Okay, let's talk about how to factor trinomials. I'm talking about uh, a problem like this. So here we have x squared minus x minus 6, and we can factor this trinomial into these two factors. Okay, so if you know how to do these type of problems, then you might want to skip this video, but maybe you don't, okay? Because I'm going to share here a nice, easy hack that you can do these problems correct 100% of the time without thinking too much, okay? And a lot of times students, they start, you know, uh, they're, they're unsure about their factoring techniques, but if you stick around, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can factor trinomials in just one second. But uh, first, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and I've been teaching math for decades, and I've come to one conclusion, and that is this. All students can be successful in mathematics, but it uh, requires two things. One, it requires a student to do the work, okay, study, do the homework, you know, practice. So that's one thing. But the other thing it requires is awesome instruction, clear and understandable math instruction. So that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, and you need, it, and you need assistance in mathematics, um, definitely check out my math help program. I'm going to leave links to all my materials in the description of this video. By the way, if you happen to be preparing for a test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam. I can help you out. If you homeschool, I got fantastic homeschool uh, middle and high school math courses that you can check out. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going and talk about how to factor trinomials. But um, let me narrow this down a bit, and let's just quickly make sure we understand the world of factoring. So in algebra, factoring is a huge topic, and it's kind of broken up in a lot of different type of skills. Okay, So the first skill that you need to understand is how to factor the greatest common factor. Right. So I have videos on all this. Matter of fact, if you want to master all of this, definitely check out any, uh, any of uh, my algebra courses, like my Algebra 1 course, Algebra 2 course. Um, I even get into this in my pre-algebra course, but I thoroughly teach this. But the first thing you need to understand when you learn how to factor is how to factor the greatest common factor. So I'm talking about things like 2x plus 10 is equal to 2 times x plus 5. Okay, that's an example of what I'm talking about. All right, now once you learn this, you move on to trinomials, and that's what this video is about. And there's two flavors of trinomials, okay? I like to call it uh, case one, and the second one is case two. What we're gonna be focusing on in this video is a case one trinomial, but there's a lot of case one trinomials in the world of factoring. And the procedure, the hack I'm gonna show you here is very, very um, close to the one you're gonna, that you can use for case two. Okay, well that'll be a separate video. So we're gonna be talking about how to deal with case one trinomials. But again, there's a lot of trinomials in the world of factoring. So this is gonna be very beneficial uh, to you. Now, uh, real quick, uh, in the world of factoring, once you got trinomials down, you also have to learn special rules like the difference of two squares, like a squared minus b squared is equal to, uh, boy, I can write a little bit better than that. Let's see here, a plus b times a minus b. So there's a ton of rules you're going to have to know as well. And then lastly, you're going to learn uh, more advanced techniques like a group factoring. Okay, so this is the kind of uh, a roadmap to your factoring skills. Again, you're going to want to start here and then move here. But a lot of students struggle with factoring trinomials. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, case one trinomials. So it's a good idea to, first of all, uh, find out, hey, what is a case one trinomial? What are we talking about here? All right, so this is a case one trinomial. So here we have x squared minus x. Let me just actually erase this here. x squared minus x minus six. This is a case one trinomial, but why? Well, in front of this x squared, there is a one, but we don't write a one x squared, okay? One x squared is the same thing as x squared. But here, if you notice, this trinomial is written in what we call standard form. It's the highest power, x squared or y squared, whatever the case might be, and then the x and then the number. So this is standard form, highest to lowest power. So the number or the coefficient in front of that uh, x squared term, if it's one, and it's only one, that is a case one, trinomial, okay? So something like this, uh, 3y squared minus y minus 6, this is not a case one trinomial because this number is not 1. Okay, this is what we call 
a case two trinomial. But the procedure I'm going to show you here uh, can be applied uh, to this. There's a couple little more steps that you have to take. But um, again, to be crystal clear here, we're dealing with case one trinomials uh, uh, for this particular video. Okay, so uh, this problem, 1x squared minus uh, x minus 6, here are the factors. We're trying to factor this, i.e., this times this is equal to this, okay? So hopefully you know how to multiply these two together, and if you don't, you're going to want to learn the FOIL technique, okay? First, outer, inner, last. I have videos on all this. Again, if you need algebra help, check out like any one of my algebra courses I teach this thoroughly. Okay, so this is a, uh, an example of what, what we're going to learn in this video is how to factor a case one trinomial. So here is our problem, x squared minus x minus 6. We know the answer. This is the answer. But let's go ahead and uh, show you how to get the answer, okay? I, I just have the written, I mean, I have the solution written out, but how do we get that? Well, I'm going to show you this now. Okay, so let's kind of just bring it in like this. All right, this is a case one trinomial. Here is the deal. So just take this one, okay, here's what we're going to do. Take this one, and you're going to multiply by this last number. Now, again, this has to be in standard form, highest to lowest power. In other words, x squared x in your number. So 1 times this last number, or this the number in the trinomial is what? Negative 6, okay? So over here to the side, you're going to write negative 6. Now we're going to list all the factors of negative 6. In other words, um, the numbers such that you multiply them together, you get back to negative 6. So here's how it works. So always write these things in pairs. So negative 6 is 1 times 6 and 1 times 6. So a negative 1 times a positive 6 is negative 6. Positive 1 times a negative 6 is also a negative 6, and then negative 2 times 3 is uh, negative 6, and then 2 times negative 3 is also negative 6, okay? So when you're doing these problems, so like this is negative 6, here's what I want you to do. So you know, what, what, what are the factors? Just think of the factors of 6. So you know 1 times 6, 1 times 6. Write these as pairs and start with the smallest numbers here. So it's negative, so I can make this negative or this negative, being that when I multiply um, these numbers together, I'm going to get back to this number. Now, right now, a lot of you are probably um, thinking that this is a lot of work. Believe me when I tell you, when you practice this, this is a super, super, super easy procedure. Okay? All right. So negative 6, here's all the factors of negative 6. Now, so, you know, what's the big deal here? Well, what we're going to want to do is look at the sum of each of these pa uh, pairs of factors. So negative 6 plus 6 is a 5. Okay? 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. And 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Okay, so this is what you're looking This is kind of the setup. Okay, now with this whole little layout here, what are we looking for? Well, let's look at the middle number right here. So this is negative 1. Okay, I'm looking for uh, the factors that add up to negative 1. I'm looking for a negative 1. So do any of these factors here add up to negative 1? Okay, yes, this one right here. Okay, these factors uh, 2 and negative 3 add up to negative 1. Okay, well, this is our answer. You're like, what are you talking about this answer? So all we need to do is write parentheses just like this. This is x squared. We put an x there and we put an x there. It's always, we always put an x and an x. Okay, so uh, when you're factoring a trinomial, if this is a y squared, it's going to be a y and a y. If this is x squared, it's x and x. Remember, we're talking about case one. Now, this is a what? This is a positive two. We could put that there. And then this is a negative three. We could put that there. So we'll put plus two and minus 3, and we are done. That is the answer. Okay, so let's go back up here and take a look. Here we had x minus 3 times x plus 2. You can write that uh, equivalently as x plus 2 times x minus 3. Order doesn't make a difference when it comes to factoring. And that's it, okay? Now, I know it probably seems like a lot because I'm slowly explaining this to you, but again, all we need to do is take that one, multiply by this last number, List the factors, okay, fine. Uh, look at the sum of these factors. Try to match it to this middle number. And if we could find a match, these numbers here are the answer. Now, just so you know, uh, sometimes uh, when you're given a problem, you may not be able to find a match. That means 
that number is prime. So for example, if I said factor 10, the number 10, you'd be like, oh, that's two times five. Those are factors. But if I said factor 13, you'd be like, well, it's just one in 13 because that's a prime number. So just as we have prime numbers, sometimes we have prime uh, trinomials. In other words, uh, you won't be able to factor it. So your answer would be uh, prime or not factorable. Okay. So just remember that. But if it is factorable, you will find, um, you know, this procedure will work. So let's go ahead and practice this again with this problem right here. Let me see here. Yeah, I have one more after this. Okay. So, uh, so we have y squared plus nine y plus 20. Okay. So again, this is one. So it's just one times this 20 is of course 20. Now I'm going to list all the factors of 20. I'm going to start with one. So one and 20, one and 20, they always come in pairs. Okay. So you just write in pairs. So one and 20, one and 20, two and 10, two and 10, four and five, four and five. These are the factors of 20. And I like to start from one and then just kind of increase this way. So I'm thinking one, is there anything two times anything that will give me 20? And then the next is four. So that way it's just a nice organized way to write the factors. Now, of course, this is positive 20. So one, a positive one times a positive 20 is, uh, is positive 20. So a negative one times a negative 20 is also a positive 20. Okay. So remember a negative times a negative is positive. So now uh, whether it's negative or positive, you're always going to have t uh, uh, a set, um, a pair of factors. So two and 10, negative two, negative 10, four and five and negative four and negative five. Okay. Now, once you get good at this, you won't have to write all the factors down. You could just go real quick and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. So here is all our factors. Now I'm not even going to write the sum of the factors. What I'm going to be thinking is, okay, or which, uh, out of all these factors, I need a, a factor that adds up to nine. Okay. I need a factor that adds up to nine. So I'm looking through this list. I'm like, oh, this one obviously adds up to a positive nine. So four and five, that is my answer, okay, because it adds up to this positive 9 right there. So I could just go ahead and write my parentheses like so, uh, y and y, because we're dealing with y squared. And this is a positive 4 and positive 5, so I could just write positive 4 plus positive 5, and that is the answer, okay? I told you that you would like this. Let's put a nice little happy face in there if you're saying, oh, this is not that bad, okay? Believe me, uh, it seems like a lot of work, but over time, you're going to be... Um, you know, uh, doing this quickly and accurately and getting the answer right 100% of the time. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at one more example. So here we have t squared minus 5t minus 24. Again, this is a trinomial. It's a case one trinomial. There's one there. So one times this negative 24 is negative 24. So I'm going to list all the factors. I know I'm going to go in pairs. So that's 1 and 24, 2 and 12. 3 and 8, 4 and 6, but I got to remember, keep the um, uh, the signs in place. So I just alternate the negative, negative 1, a negative here, a negative there, a negative here, a negative there. You kind of see, and if you just kind of systemize this way, you know, it makes this much easier. Okay, so here's all the factors of negative 24, and I'm thinking, okay, I need uh, a negative 5. Okay, so which one of these can give me a negative 5? Just scanning the list, you can kind of see, I, I'm not going to be able to get a 5, from 2 and 12 or 1 and 24 or 4 and 6, but I can get a 5 from 3 and 8. I need a negative 5, so this is the one I need. Okay, 3 plus negative 8 right there is negative 5. That's what I need. So I uh, have my factors. So this is t squared. I'm going to put a t here, a t there. This is a positive 3 right here, so I'll put a positive 3, and that's a negative 8, so I'll put a negative 8 right there, and I am done 100%. Let me give you a nice little happy face if you're my student. A plus. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a few stars just like you got back in the second grade just to make you feel extra special. But I told you this is going to be super easy. Now, a lot of you are like, no, um, I can. I, there's another method called the guess and check method where you can kind of just check and kind of manipulate this. That's fine, too. If you already know how to do this, that's excellent. But I'm telling you right now, a lot of you out there um, are not as good in factoring as you think you are. You're going to make a mistake and uh, you know you, you can't afford to make mistakes when it comes to factoring because too much of the things you do in algebra depend upon, depend upon your ability to factor. Okay, So if you know how to factor the GCF, we're in the world of trinomials. I just gave you a 100% foolproof 
way to factor case one trinomials. And once you learn this technique, um, basically there is a technique to factor case two uh, trinomials. I'll make an additional video on that. Uh, matter of fact, I probably already have it on my YouTube uh, channel, but uh, again, I teach all this stuff super thoroughly. The thing in my math program is I do tons of practice examples, okay? So that's, you know, it's beyond a lesson. I go into a lot of variety of problems. But anyways, you're going to learn case two te uh, technique. If you're confused about that, and that is uh, more challenging, uh, I can give you a procedure for that, a nice little hack, uh, so you can get these things right 100% of the time. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over 8,000 plus math videos from basic math to advanced math like uh, calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.